court, that's an illegal court. Where's the trial by jury of your peers? If you're going into a traffic court, it's another quasi fake court. There's no jury. So when you go in, and you know, if you don't assert your rights, the judge is going to do it for you. So you know, to, to assert your rights means to do so with confidence and with certainty and clearly. So when people go into these courts and say it's not working, you're in the wrong court. court. Right. First of all, you should move the venue to a proper court. And if the judge, the, the proper way to do that is to issue an order to move the case to the correct court. So you issue an order. And then if the judge try to disregard that order, you contact the circuit court judges, say, hey, we got a judge down here. That's not, you know, for the, the foremost thing that you always do, man, when you go into any of these venues, is to always hold them to their oath. Because any public official always have an oath to uphold the constitution of the state and of the republic. Kind of. Because if this is supposed to be a republic, right. or they're turning it into a democracy, you know what I mean? Which is essentially mob rule. Which means like, you know, how they pass these laws for the homosexuals and all that. Right. Like the Supreme Court, yeah, everybody can get married now, you know? Right. Because that came from a majority vote. In a republic, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Just because the vast majority of people say, oh, well, yeah, let's vote and gain rights. In a republic, it, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you go by what's law. You know, what is law? And what's law is common to all. Like, I know that if I violate you, or if I damage some of your property, the right thing to do is to repair the damages or, or pay you back or work it off somehow. You know, that's the common law. And a lot of people think they want to live under the common law, but they really don't because... If I, like, kill a man under the common law, then I'm entitled to die. If that's his decision, you know what I mean? I could be put to death. But in this setup, you kill someone, you go to jail, you might stay 20, 30 years on death row. You know what I mean? But you kill their family. And they got people so discombobulated, some people deny death is wrong, but he, kill, he might have killed your son. He killed your daughter, but you think he should be there on death row. It's showing you how that system is not really in compliance with the laws of the Heavenly Father. So, I mean, but... It does work if you move it into the right venue and you assert your rights accordingly. But you've got to know how to deal with contract law. It's all about contract, man. It's all about offers and acceptance. For, so if I go into a court and the judge, first of all, you shouldn't take orders from a judge. Because right. if I take it's a order, sir. right, if I take an order from someone, then what does that mean? I'm Subjugate. under his authority. Right. I'm subjugating myself to his authority. It's like me talking to my son, go over there and sit down. Huh. He's under my authority. But if he tells me to go, and because you know, he'll try and catch you in contempt. So that's why you gotta be a thinker. And this is why it doesn't work for a lot of people that go on. Like I was talking to a sister on the phone the other day, and you know, she was like in between the court, and um, she called me like, well, he told me to go and sit down. I said, well, what did you do? She was like, I went over there and sit down. I was like, well, you just took an order from her. So you subjugated yourself to the jurisdiction of the court. Simple things like that could be a jurisdiction trap. Me, the way I would deal with that, if he said, well, you go over there and sit down, young man. I said, you know what? Until you guys get yourselves together, I'm going to go over here and have a seat. Right. See, I'm doing it according to my own accord. Right. You know what I mean? Your mind has to be short like that because they'll play games with you like that. Another sister I was talking to, you know how you walk through the gate and all of that? She asked him, do you want me to come through there? And he's like, yeah, come on in. Come on in. <laughs> come on through. You know, he, he called on her name. She wouldn't answer to the name. He, you know, she, he constantly, is this you or not? Because if this is not you, I'm going to issue a warrant for your arrest. So they play semantics like that. I, I seen a brother go in and did that. He's like, well, he's not here today. I'm here as intervening. Uh, uh, you know, I'm here as, you know, the authorized representative. He was like, well, if Kenny's not here, I'm going to put out a warrant for his arrest. So the brother, you know, said that as soon as he left the court, the judge told the bailiff to tell the officers in the hallway, arrest him. They arrest him and threw him in a box, man. But then he came back with a counter suit against him. Let me say something about that because I want y'all to see the difference here. You want, I want you to see the difference here, what we're talking about, about a brother giving information. You know what I'm saying? Giving information to actually help people, right? And can tell you stories and not just get up there and put on shine. You understand? Because he says something. I don't know polite, and I don't know son that, right? And I'm just looking, outward looking in, I want you brothers to say something too. Looking out, looking in, I truly believe when I first started watching son that is a good brother. 
You understand? And I believe the brother still may has still may be good. You know what I'm saying? All of us have our have our problems. No! But you have to be careful who you associate with. Stop. Right? You have to be careful who you associate with. Give me uh uh, uh take care of it for me, please. Hey, uh, uh, give me uh please ask us chapter um uh eleven verse thirteen real quick. <clears throat> Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 13. 33, Salaki. Oh, uh, 33, Salaki. Take heed of a mischievous man, mm -hmm. for he worketh wickedness, mm -hmm. lest he bring <laughs> upon thee a perpetual block. Okay, let's find out what perpetual mean. Read that in the dictionary. What does perpetual block? Now, I'm going to read it for, I'm gonna read it again. It says, take heed of a mischievous man. Right? This is a warning. You came to say, that's my brother. Right. You understand? It's like so right. you got to correct that. Right. Right. You can't, sit there and say you can't sit there and say nothing. Right. It says, take heed of a mischievous man when they got witnesses. Uh. Right. Right. Or oh, you can't just say well, you, that you just hating. Right. Right. I mean, that's what he was doing until that guy, Young Pharaoh, came. Right. 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 You just burnt my drawers Smash. open now, brother. Your drawers is burning. Up. You right. hate. <laughs> yeah, what you, you hate. talking about? Right? <laughs> hey, right. Take heed of a mischievous man, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. for he worked of wickedness, lest he bring upon thee a perpetual block. Read perpetual. It says perpetual in the Random House Dictionary. Go ahead. Concise edition. Mm -hmm. Continuing or enduring forever, lasting an indefinitely long time. <laughs> Continuing or continue without interpretation. That's right. So or interruption. Oh, so so you're going to get that forever, perpetual block, right, from mischievous man. Them with wickedness. One more scripture here, them let the, brother, the other brothers in the see that you finish up and let them say something to go back and forth. Now go back, to, go to, stay in the book. Uh, please ask chapter 8. Let's read verse 15. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 8, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Travel not by the way with a bold fellow. That's right, with a bold fellow. You know, this man will always be in front, got his chest stuck out all the damn time. Right. He don't care where he go, he think he's the shit. Right? Go ahead. Lest he become grievous unto thee. Go ahead. For he will do according to his own will. He will do according to his own will. I don't care nothing about you, brother. I got mine. To, I got right. mine. You got yours to get. Right, 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 right. You understand? He gonna go. He don't care how he get it, who he get it from, and who he do it to. Start from the top. Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verse fifteen. First word is stop. Travel. Go ahead. Not. It said travel. Not. Right. Go ahead. By the way with a bold fellow. Come on. Lest he become grievous unto thee. Go ahead. For he will do according to his own will. Come on. And thou shalt perish with him. Say what? And thou shalt perish with so him. So if you keep that mischievous man is going to bring upon that perpetual block, right? That's doing that wickedness, right? And he will become grievous towards you. And it says what going to happen? And thou shalt perish with him through his folly. You're going to perish with him through his folly. Con. Point blank period. You're going to perish with him through his folly. Right? Is anyone that? That's it on that. Okay. Go ahead. Slot it. Yeah, let's, can, can you get Matthew 15 verse 13? Yeah. There's one scripture in that one. Then what I want you to go into, like the brother was talking about, because this is an education service here. Right? Understand that, right? So you don't have to. Uh, uh, write. It, it's better if someone raises questions, right? And then we I can that. respond to it. Yeah. Right. We're gonna definitely do that. You can raise some too, cause y'all, you know, raise questions. We gonna raise some to you too. But we're gonna read that. Matthew's what? Fifteen, thirteen. Matthew chapter fifteen, verse thirteen. But he answered and said, "Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted shall be rooted up." So all the Egyptologists, all that nonsense, you know, all of them denouncing the scriptures, like all of you that's going into the videos making mockery, you're going to be uprooted. Come. You're going to be uprooted. Polite's already being uprooted, man. Now he's over there in Hollywood, man. He's, o he's over there in Hollywood. The, the people, you know, that actually uplift him, now he's shitted on. Part of my language, man. He, don't, he really, really, never really cared about his people, man. You know, if he really did... That he would, you know, um, repair the damages that he's done. Because he's messed some people up mentally. Now, I was talking to a brother today. 
that brother was like almost weeping. Because he was like, man, I really believed in this brother, you know? I really believed in this dude, and it makes you lose hope. Yeah. And a lot of people are feeling that way, man. Like, I mean, he made a lot of people lose hope. It makes it hard to trust your own people. Yeah, right. that's what he was saying. He was like, man, I don't know who to trust now. Like, you don't know. And then you, <laughs> some of the people I talked to, they was like, yo, man, I've been burnt once. You know what I mean? So don't try and screw me over. You know, they like real nervous and leery now. I was like, but you know, it's up to you, man. I'm not here as a salesman or nothing. <laughs> I'm not a salesman, you know? You gotta want to do this. Because there's a scripture that actually talks about when somebody try to help somebody else out, they link, they, they trusted somebody, then when you when you uh, be deceitful, underhand to them, then that person, guess what? If they could actually help somebody, they're like, man, I don't know. Right. You know, you know I don't right. know. You know, I, I was going to invest this brother. Last time I invested this brother, sister, yep. man, I got him. Yep. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and it, it, it talks about most of the way I find that scripture where it talks about you, you, you helping somebody or you trying to get somebody to do some work for you. You're like, man, it's, man, by Bernie, man, I can't, I can't, I can't trust this person. Some people are now. You understand? So now you might have a, a good brother, a good sister, who uh, 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 say, you know what, I'm gonna help this brother out, right? And now they won't because what some other Negro did, did, did. Shit on the street. Right, right. What some other Negro did, you know? So what I want to go into right now, what we're going to go into. Is uh, uh, dealing with what polite was actually offering the brother, right? And let's see exactly what that is, right? What it's talking about, and uh, we're gonna have some questions on this. You know, uh, does it work? What is it? You know, why I operate in it? You know, you know. So, uh, but I know the scripture says, don't let any matter leave us big or small. You know, say so don't be ignorant of that matter. You understand? Whether it's big or small. So, uh, what was he? What's the issue? And what was he talking about with this uh, security? What you call it? Secure party credited. But he, he was calling it status correction. Yeah. Right, right. And and he wasn't really correcting people's status. You know, um, and, and basically whenever you go into any kind of public venue like a court, mm -hmm. that's the first thing that's supposed to be established. Is status. Now, then the next the thing you're supposed to deal with Right, it's the first yeah, then it's jurisdiction. Right. And then adjudication. So um but when we go into these color of law courts, they skip the first two steps. And they just sort of adjudicate us. Because like, is this your name? Mm. So, because they're trying to create a joinder. Once they can assign you to the name, then they switch the liability from the straw man or the corporate construct <laughs> to you. So now, if you don't have the money, they throw you in the box. Ah. So, what he's telling people is, well, you change your status, this is not going to affect you. Because, you know, with the whole birth certificate thing, we're actually made like incompetent wards of the state. So when we go into their courts, they say, well, if you can't afford an attorney, the court will appoint one for you because you're incompetent. Like, you can't, you can't put a six-year-old, and it really has nothing to do with members. That's what members. you're doing, you minority. Right. Come yeah, you're a minor. You're a minority. Right. You're a minor. It has so, to do with population Right, counts. right. And so a minor is not intelligent enough to speak for themselves, so you have a representative. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when it's represented, well, the original. Representing you. Yeah. We, you know, we present is something that may have never even been presented in the first place. So, you know, refer to him as your authorized representative. So when you when you change your status, mm -hmm. you're taking that stance. So your corporate construct becomes your corporation. Gotcha. You know, so you become the authorized representative of that. Gotcha. So then you do something like known as a whole harmless agreement. So any kind of debt or charge that comes against the straw man doesn't apply to the authorized representative. Just like it wouldn't apply to an attorney, he'll talk for you, he'll speak for you, but I ain't going to jail for you. Right. They're going to throw you in a box you're going, but I'll speak for you. Right. So that's what you're doing. So when you go into a lot of um, courts, and you, you know, there was a point that people was taking this stuff down to the Register of Deeds office God. and putting it on record. And so when, when the sister was saying it doesn't work, I'm like, what's well, she